In this question, we're told that Peter's tutor feels he's late in 15% of the daily school registrations, which occur twice daily, so that's a morning registration and an afternoon registration, making a total of 10 in a five-day week. The data is summarised in the table below. We're asked to use a chi-squared test at a 1% level of significance to investigate whether this data can be modelled by a binomial distribution. So, this is a goodness of fit. We want to see how well the binomial distribution will fit this data. So, we'll start as always with our hypotheses. The null hypothesis says that the binomial distribution with n value of 10 and a p value of 0 0.15 is a good fit. And the alternate, that same distribution is not a good fit. Let's look at the data. We have some observed values and we're going to calculate our own expected values. So from this distribution, the expectation is going to be 1.5. That should have like the highest frequency. Just check in and that works. And the significance level in this particular case is 1%. We're going to use this distribution to calculate our own expected values. I'm just going to add them to this column in red. So this data is for 35 weeks. So each probability that we find, we then need to multiply by 35. So the probability there are zero lates in a week multiplied by 35 gets us an expectation of 6.891. The probability that there's one late in the week multiplied by 35, that gets us 12.16 and so on. So here we have all of our expected values. I'm actually going to add one more row here. So from what the teacher observed, there were no weeks where Peter was late five times or more. But the binomial distribution does consider getting up to and even more than five times. I can see the expected values are reducing from 4.5 to 1.4. So I'm expecting the rest of these to be quite small. I'll group them all together. The expected number of weeks out of 35 for there to be five or more lates is 0 0.346. Okay, looking at the expected values that we have, we don't want any expected values to fall below five. So we're going to need to group some of these together. Three, four, and five plus, we're gonna group those together. And we can just call them three plus. So I'm just gonna summarize the observed values and here's the expected values. I've added 6, 3, and 0 to make 9, and I'm adding 4.544, 1.403, and 0 0.346 to get 6.293. Now, all of my expecteds are above 5, and we can go ahead with our chi-squared calculations. So this test statistic, I'm going to find the difference between the observed and the expected, square it, and divide by the expected. So here's the calculation that we get. Once I've written this out, there's only four fractions to write. Once I've written this out, over to my calculator and I get 1.73. So our test statistic is 1.73. Our critical value for three degrees of freedom and this is three degrees because we had four rows after we combined and we subtract one because we know that the totals should add up to 35. Three degrees of freedom, the critical value at 1% is going to be 11.345. On a diagram, the 11.345 is going to be here. Anything in the shaded region is a significant result. Our 1.73, very far away from the shaded region, it's over here. It's not a significant result. It's quite likely that we would have a test statistic like this if this was the underlying binomial distribution. So, not a significant result. Let's formalise that. 1.73 is less than 11.345. This is not significant. And then our final conclusion. So there's not enough evidence to reject H0. And this binomial distribution is a good fit.